who didn't really trade a whole lot to move up to number two. Classic X-Tech, jinx the playoffs. You guys are putting this on me? You know who we have to put it on is Bobby Ryan. We missed the playoffs by one point. This overtime game against the Tampa Bay Lightning, Bobby Ryan had the OT winner. If we would have had the extra point, we would have been in the postseason, but Bobby Ryan did us so dirty. Oh my god. Comes to Ottawa, makes a trillion dollars, and then just pieces out and then screws us over a few years later. Unreal. <laughs> So what's going on guys and welcome back to the Ottawa Senators franchise mode here at the 2022-2023 NHL Entry Draft. Now there's some talk in the comments about maybe potentially moving up or maybe taking a guy like Ilya Habibulin. Now he is the best sniper on the board. Now everyone says you need scoring, you need scoring, yes, yes, yes. But Habibulin is a winger, unfortunately. Now, this guy kind of messed up his name. Uh, he says, go after Ilya Hybibulin uh, because you need a pure sniper. But um, I feel you. I understand what you guys are saying about the pure sniper thing. Because this guy has no weaknesses. Goal scoring, pro release, hard wrist shot. A, 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 B, B. Got a similar style to Mike Gartner. And Mike Gartner had like a thousand 40 goal seasons. The guy was a freak. Obviously not saying he's going to have a career like Mike Gartner. But still. Still, uh, this guy could be a stud in the draft. Simon Jacob says, how funny would it be if you traded the shoe and other top six potential forwards for Manderville, the potential number one overall pick? He says, not at all. It wouldn't be funny. It's the right thing to do. Like so X Tech C. So nine people seem to like that. I mean, yeah, he's sick. He had over a hundred points this year. Trading the shoe for a guy who's again another year away, or maybe two years, depending on if this is like a weak draft. Uh, it just depends, right? I mean, I'll have a look at it come the draft day, but really, what do we have to move up? Yeah, the shoe is a trading piece, but I like the shoe. I want to hang on to him. But again, is there really a lot of places for the shoe to move up? Uh, if you look here at our center depth, basically one, two, three, we got it pretty much locked down. I'm really hoping that Nick Suzuki can take over the second line minutes this year. I'm hoping he gets up to like 85. Now, Evgeny Malkin, we're going to bring up a comment here from Brandon Barenfeld. He's going to say, you had Malkin signed for one year. I don't think it's wise bringing him back. He's 36 and he's declining really fast. In my opinion, there are two things you need in the offseason, a legitimate second line center, so he doesn't believe in Nick Suzuki and a legitimate top scoring winger. Alex Nylander is good and all, but probably suited for the second line right wing spot. So he seemed to think that Nick Suzuki isn't going to be the man. Now I'm not super sold on Nick Suzuki either. I have hope, but again, I'm not sold he's going to be that second line guy. Colin White has proven to us he is a first liner, no question. 85 points, that is it. Signed, sealed, and delivered. I trust this guy. Colin White is our number one guy. But I see what you guys are saying. Maybe we're just one or two pieces off from really being dominant. So back to what I was saying about the center thing. If Nick Suzuki grows to 85, I'm totally fine with having that for the second line. But I also think we could use a scoring winger. If you guys think Nylander should be on the second line, now he has dropped to an 84, so that's a little bit concerning. Um, but Anthony Mantha and Colin White, they're up there. So, I mean, we could use both. We could really use Manderville. We could also use Ilya Habibulin. But what do we have to trade? The answer is not a whole lot. I guess we could see about the shoe. He could be on the block. I know he does have a ton of trade value. And he's medium elite, 79. 21 years old. Now, I like the shoe. We got him in the third round, which was just a steal. He's locked up for another three years at $1 million. I mean, for an NHL player for $1 million, bucks, that's pretty good. He could have a breakout year. We also have this guy who was a low elite guy I signed in free agency. He's now up to 80 overall. So maybe that could be somewhat of a trading chip we could use. Maybe this guy and the shoe and a couple of picks we can move up. Who knows? But 
that's kind of how I'm feeling ab about the team. Kind of what I gathered in the comments is that we're really missing that 90 plus guy, or we're really missing that McDavid effect, or that really, you know, that top end kind of guy. So just to see what our trade values are looking like here. Now, I don't think Mandreville is going to go one. I think that defenseman's going to go one. Now, they don't want to trade the first overall pick, which is kind of, that kind of hurts us, but the shoe has a ton of trade value. What about that other center? Uh, he's 80 overall. He's got a decent amount. I mean, for what it is, it's not bad. Forrest could actually come up for next year and be the fourth line center if we do part ways with the shoe. Ooh, he had a sick year in the AHL. 55 points. Uh, that's awesome. Back-to-back 30-goal -back years in the A. This guy could really be something. He was that former first-round pick we got out of the Buffalo trade, which was the Jeff Skinner trade. So um, this could be okay. We have a lot of trade value here. Plus, we have two first round picks as well. We got the 15th and the 29th. Obviously, you want to gamble with your most expensive piece, that being the 15th overall. Now, will that go through for the first overall pick? This is something I would be okay with paying. They want all three of these guys. We don't really have room for this guy. The shoe is a fourth liner. I wouldn't mind going after Manderville. So trading for the first is really difficult. We've tried it in the past. This is a ton of trade value, though. It looks like it is in our favor. But I think he's going to go second. But again, I don't know if I really want to take that risk. So, oh man, do we just trade for the first? Ah, uh, man, if we trade for the first, we're going to select Manderville. He had 100 points. He's going to be legit. Um, is he NHL ready next year? I'm not sure. Um, but let's just try it. I have a feeling this could go through. Trade rejected. Not sufficient at all. Okay, well, what if we threw the 29th in there? It's basically a second round pick. It does entice the trade value quite a bit going to Chicago. Trade rejected. It is so hard to trade for first overall picks. It is really, really difficult. Uh, they do not want to give it up, so we're going to let Chicago have the pick. If they don't pick Manderville, we'll go say what's up to the San Jose Sharks. If they don't pick Manderville, they don't. Okay, I was right. Again, they don't want to get rid of the pick, and it's from Pittsburgh as well. So kind of does make sense for them to part ways with it because obviously it's not a free pick, but they definitely won the lottery with that, that's for sure. So let's see if they want to part ways with that first overall pick. So again, we're going to offer them the... We're going to offer him the exact same thing for the second and hopefully pick Mandervell. Trade accepted. Oh my God, that was okay. There we go. That works. Okay, we just moved into the top two. I didn't think that was going to happen. Mandervell, welcome to the squad. Let's go. All right, that seemed like it was... I mean, maybe I could have got it done without... Um, without the other guy in there. But regardless, Adrian Mandervelle, welcome to Ottawa. The, the future, the future of this team. He's got, oh, this guy's going to be a stud. Honestly, going into this, I didn't expect to move into the top two. Um, I know how hard it is to trade into the top three. I am interested to see how Habi Bulin is. He, I have a feeling he's going to be just an absolute stud. But Mandervelle, I mean, we're going to walk up to the podium right now. Let's go. The Ottawa Senators would like to congratulate the Washington Capitals on their second Stanley Cup in franchise history. I'd like to thank the beautiful city of Arizona for hosting the NHL entry draft with our first overall pick. We would like to select out of USA East center Adrian Manderville. It's official. Welcome to Ottawa. 77 medium elite. So it doesn't look like this is a very stacked draft. We had a defenseman go number one, 78 overall. Then we had Manderville at a 77. Now, okay, I'm happy with this. I'm just trying to wrap my head around what just happened. So basically for Manderville, we traded a first, which was an okay pick, 15th overall, is nothing really crazy. We traded a first, technically a third round pick. That's how we got the shoe. And we also traded away a player we got in free agency. So when you think about it, we didn't really trade a whole lot to move up to number two. Now, I had high hopes for the shoe. I liked his nickname. More fun for slow sim games. We get to have the return of the shoe. And then, obviously, we got the what could have been Manderville versus the San Jose Sharks. So, it doesn't look like there's a big 80 overall guy in this draft. Looks like a bunch of 
bunch of 76s, 77s, and obviously Jarvanim being the 78 overall medium elite defenseman going to the Chicago Blackhawks. So long gone are the days of Duncan Keith and of the days of all their stud defensemen. Brent Seabrook, no longer. They are rebuilding. Patrick Kane's getting older. Jonathan Taze I saw was on the chopping block. So there's uh, new times there in Chicago. They had the first overall pick. They pick Patrick Kane. So there's is that grinder I saw a lot of people in the comments say maybe you try to go after that grinder Maurice Dag last time we picked a dag you guys know what happened there I want to see what happy Bruin's gonna look like oh no Bruin goes to Toronto that's not okay yeah that, that can't happen uh, so it looks like happy Bruin ooh 77 medium elite damn he could have been in the top three, man. Oh, boy. And he goes to the Anaheim Ducks. We don't play them a whole lot, but I do want to have a look at Habibulin. But if um, if Manderville wasn't there, I think that Habibulin would have been my next pick because we need that legitimate top-scoring guy. But we do have a future number one center or number two, depending on how he turns out. I'm just trying to see here if there's any... Uh, if there's any uh, stud players that got missed over here. So we got Milroy and Gilroy going back to back. That's kind of funny. Going to the Bruins and the LA Kings. So that's where it really drops off. You got the 75 and then 65, 64. So the top top nine was really good. And then after that, it doesn't really look super fantastic. Just seeing here, it really could be a pretty weak draft. Yeah, there's nothing crazy. We got Martin Dingle. What a name goes to San Jose. So we're going to have to watch out for that. Now, we have the 29th overall pick, I believe, if I remember correctly. Um, yeah, we have number 29 here. So we picked a stud forward. I wouldn't mind going after a defenseman here or if there's a really good winger. Ooh, low franchise. Ooh, do 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 Low franchise. He's probably low elite. Maybe medium elite. Ooh, or we got Caden Slater here. Um, I've never seen a franchise player. I don't know what this could be. Potential franchise, two bars. I'm gonna say he's gonna be medium elite. He could be a low overall. You know what, I'm gonna take a bit of a risk here. I could trade down. That might be the smartest move. Um, Let's see what I would need to do to trade down to early in the second round and then go after that guy. So let's see if we can trade with New Jersey. Let's see if we can do something here. So they want to get rid of their second and their third. It doesn't say that they want to move up, but let's just see what we can do here. Let's try to get another pick in this draft and move down a few spots. So trade rejected. Yeah, so we don't want to part ways with the third. Could I get like a fourth maybe? How about a fourth? I just want to get an extra pick and then we can go ahead and take a chance on that franchise guy. I assume he's going to be low elite, maybe maybe medium elite. That would be awesome. Uh, how about give me a fifth? There you go. So we get another pick in this draft and then potentially we get to go after the guy that we want. Hopefully he doesn't get picked up here. Stafford, he was that defenseman that was uh, at the top of the list. We got Booth, who's a 61, going to the Stanley Cup champions. I don't know who they picked. I really hope it wasn't um, wasn't that guy. And Omar. Okay, cool. I do want to go back to this comment, though, uh, Simon Jacob. I'm pretty much going to credit this guy with uh, us getting Manderville because I wasn't originally going to do it. I thought, you know, it might be a little bit too hard, but it wasn't actually that bad. So, Simon Jacob, thank you. Um, there you go. So you are now a legend in the comments. Everyone thank Simon Jacob. Uh, this guy is... This guy's low elite. I am very interested to see what this other guy is going to look like, though. There he is. He's top. That's perfect. What a selection. I moved to 34. It's perfect. Uh, we got these. Oh, these guys could be pretty good as well. You know, I'm going to go with this one. Kale Josephson. He is, I don't even know where he's playing. We did scout him, but we didn't get that good of an idea. So let's pick a franchise player here. Let's go low elite 65. So, <laughs> I mean, it's good. Um, I just saw that franchise tag and was like, ooh. Ooh, that seems fun. He's a Swede. You know what? Not a bad pick. Not a bad pick at all. He's only 18 years old, 65 overall. I'm pretty happy about that. Just trying to see if there was any crazy players here. 69 overall, Corbin. We got another low elite. 
I don't think there's anything super crazy. So with our other pick here, we got another second round pick. We have 15th, obviously. So let's go ahead and make a selection. We've so far picked two forwards. So I think going after a defenseman might not be the worst idea. We can go after Nikolai Afinaganov. He is a, he's got a similar style to Dan Hamhus. All right, we got Dal Cole here. Vince Dal Cole is a defensive defenseman, uh, similar style to Shea Weber. So it's either between one of these guys. They're not super accurate on their scouting. I think I'm going to go with, let's go with a Finneganoff here. He's a two-way defenseman. Does have the two bars towards uh, medium top four. Probably like a, what is he here? Medium top six. 53 overall is not bad. I do want to see what Dal Cole is going to look like though. So let's see what we missed out on. A Finneganoff. Hopefully that pick. Okay, 59. Yeah, there you go. We made the right choice. I'm getting better at this drafting thing. Let's go. We're going to go a little bit off the board here with another defenseman. This guy is 5'9", is an offensive defenseman, kind of small, 18 years old, had 15 points in 64 games. Or we can go with Dylan Olzek here, who is an offensive defenseman, 6'3", had a better year, although he's playing in the O, uh, as opposed to the U.S., uh, wherever he played, USA East. Low elite, he's probably like a medium top six as well. Let's go with the exact with Dakota Gregory here, and then we'll uh, see what Olzek is a little bit down the road. 59 medium top six. Again, it's not terrible. Uh, okay, pretty good two-way forward there that we missed out on. Uh, looking to see what that other guy is if he ever gets picked. Okay, I think we made a pretty good choice there. Okay, so Olzek is a low top four, 63 overall, and we got a 59 overall medium top six. So, eh. I don't know. What do you guys think? You think guys think I should have went with uh, Olzak there? You guys can let me know. Just having a look here. This guy very well could be medium elite. 19 years old. We know all in uh, Seattle about picking some older players in the draft. Medium top six. Uh, okay, wasn't that great. So we got another centerman there. Uh, we didn't pick a goalie in this draft because there really wasn't any on the board. But I think that's going to be it for this draft. Out of 10, what do you guys give? We actually have one more pick. I lied. I thought we only had a fourth okay well here we go now I said I didn't pick a goalie and I'm pretty sure this is our last pick now I've seen so many times on Twitter and so many times people in the comments saying oh I got a medium elite goalie or a medium franchise goalie in like the fifth round this could be one of those situations or it couldn't be I could be totally lying right now but I don't think we have another pick now that means yeah we oh say sorry we do why do I keep thinking I don't have all these picks Okay, maybe we'll pick that goalie with our sixth. Do we have a seventh too? Am I just off my rocker? We do have a seventh. Why did I think I have no picks? So I'm pretty sure we could snag that goalie with our pick in the sixth or the seventh round. For, for some reason, I thought we had no picks. I don't understand why I thought that. Let's go with a safe pick here. We know he's medium top six, Jakub Miranov. All right, let's go. Jakub, Jacob, how do you want it to be pronounced? 53 overall, medium top six. I thought that said pox and it goes to Detroit. I was like, oh my God, no way. All right, let's see how good our scout actually is here, picking a gem. Now, I've never picked a gem this late. Could be a franchise goalie. Who knows? Oh, my God, he is. No way. Medium. Oh, boys. There we go. A medium franchise in the fifth round. Holy crap. Let's go. Kim Lundstrom. Oh my god, this could be the draft of the century for the Ottawa Senators. Future first liner, future everything, future goaltender, future defenseman. Do we have any other gems? What do we got going on here? We could potentially maybe get another goalie in Lee Bus. He could be the bus that everyone rides on. Stop at the bus stop, Lee Bus. Or we could go with Kabanov who is, he is a gem, but I mean, this could be another franchise goalie. I want to say go for another franchise goalie, but I don't think he's going to be franchised that late. I wish I could see what this guy is looking like after the draft. I just pinned him. Uh, this guy is a gem as well. They're both 19 years old. You know what? We got a franchise goalie. Let's try with the defenseman here. He's medium elite, 60 overall. Not bad. Keep on forgetting we have all these picks. Now with our seventh, 
since I feel like we have pretty much won this entire draft, let's go ahead and pick that other goalie. If he's franchise, I'm just gonna have to listen to my scout every single time. I'm probably throwing away a pick here, but it's the seventh round and he's actually low elite. You know what? Not bad. The bus, the bus stop. That's awesome. All right, what a draft. Holy crap. We got Manderville, Josephson, and then a bunch of pretty good guys, and then boom, franchise goalie. Lundstrom, medium franchise. Not even low franchise, medium franchise. This guy could be legit. That is awesome. What a draft. So out of 10, what would you guys give me on that draft? So Evgeny Malkin, I got you for your playoff experience and we missed the postseason by one point. I don't want to talk about it. Good luck in the rest of your career. You had a mini pit stop here in Ottawa, but you deserve better. See you later, buddy. So we don't got that much to do and we have 20 million bucks to work with. So Philip Gustafson, you are obviously going to get re-signed as a backup goalie. 2.75, does he want to come back? He does, he's 25 years old, probably just gonna be a backup for the rest of his career. Let's go with a 2.575 million dollar contract. Pretty much uh, Jacob St. Bernard Docker, Ty Connick, Ryan Merkley, Bergman and Batherson, I guess. And the rest of them are just like AHL guys. So I'll go ahead and uh, tighten all this up and then I'll see you guys in a second. Jacob Bernard Docker wants 2 million bucks. I am totally cool with that. 2 million bucks for three years. If you can keep doing what you're doing, he had an excellent rookie campaign. Uh, absolutely. 16 goals, 32 points. That's a steal of a contract. I'm really going to try hard to get him top four minutes this year. We're going to qualify uh, Merkley here. If he gets an offer, I might have to look at it. Johnny Tyconic wants a lot of money. He wants 3.9 for three years. That's a lot of money to pay for a guy who is minus 60 this year on a pretty good team. He only had 16 points. Listed as an offensive player, um, Jacob Bernard Docker is really knocking on your door. Uh, so we'll go three points. Let's go three points. Let's go 3.4 for two years. All right. Let's give you a little bit of a bridge deal. You can prove yourself. So we're gonna let Julius Bergman go. I don't have any room for him. He wants a one-way deal. He wants big boy money, and he sucks. So we're just gonna let him go. Thanks for something. I'm not sure what for, but thanks. Uh, good luck. Hope you find a good contract elsewhere. All right, so Jacob Bernard Docker is good to go and we are good to go headed into the off season. Now we have to go ahead and sign some scouts in a minute here. I also have to look at free agency because there's still kind of that hole in the second line. Now I'm hoping that either Manderville gets really good over the off season, but I don't think he's going to grow to a second line center. Uh, he could start the year in the fourth line we could give him like nine games before we send him back down to junior or what we could do is sign a legitimate second liner in free agency but again again that's the thing with Ottawa we could do this but oh we could do this or but because if what and for there um there's all these different things I just want it to be one straight shot I don't want to be working around these different these different things but what are we going to do with Nick Suzuki if there's a stud second line center in free agency? So let's check it out together. Let's go and we'll see what's out here. So, oh yeah, just Nathan McKinnon. Oh my God, what is going on? Look at this free agent. Oh my God, Jack Hughes is in free agency. Oh my God, Jack Hughes is in free agency. And we have enough money to get him. Oh my God. Can already hear it in the comments now. Oh boy. Jack Hughes, how you doing buddy? You like Ottawa? Okay, so first off, let's just have a look at this free agency pool. McKinnon, Monaghan, Rantanen, Forsberg, Wenberg, all the Bergs. Uh, we got Hughes, Tarasenko, Kane, Robbie Fabry, Jonathan Druin, Reinhardt, Galchenyuk, Larkin, Huberdeau, Hayden Fleury, Braden Point, Tyson Berry, Max Domi, Orlov, Ryan O'Reilly, Krug, Pouliot. This is an all-star lineup just chilling in free agency. Does no one want to sign their players? Like, do you, is there like a lack of money in the NHL? There's some insane goalies as well. Thatcher Demko, Tuka Rask. Oh my God. I mean, Tuka Rask is coming to the end of his career, but he's still a starter. Vancouver, why are you letting Thatcher Demko walk? So Jack Hughes hasn't had that breakout year quite yet. He's 22 years old and this could be the team to do it. Um, but again, where is he going to play? With all of our extra players, where is he going to play? 
All right, so I've been having a very long chat with my assistant GMs, and we can't really come up with a permanent solution. Now, in this video, I wanted to get the entire thing done. I wanted to go up to the start of next year, but with this ridiculous, insane free agent crop, I don't think I can start the year without getting your guys' input here. So here's kind of what I'm thinking just for food for thought. But what I want from you guys is I want a breakdown of what the hell we should do. Here's what I think the team should look like right now. Obviously, Manderville is not quite penciled in there. And we need a fourth line left winger, which is easy. We can find players like that. Nylander, White, Mantha. We could go get a guy like Patrick Kane and put him on the first line. He's got Stanley Cup experience. He's got three cups, I think. Three cups? Two cups? I don't know. He's got a bunch of cups. We could play him with White and Mantha and then put Radish, Suzuki, and Nylander on the second line, then move everyone down. So then we move Kachuk down and we move Andreas, GM Mode Legend, Johnson down to the fourth line. So then we don't have to sign a fourth line winger because every Everyone got moved down a spot. Now for centers, I'm concerned that Nick Suzuki, he's, you know, he's like a pretty face. Yeah, he's good. Is he legitimately second line material? Now, Jack Hughes, obviously 22 years old. He is the definition of a freaking stud. I would love to get this guy on the squad. We just drafted a future top two centerman. Kind of how I'm thinking of this is like, you need a car. It's like, yeah, you can go spend a bunch of money on Jack Hughes, which would be like a Ferrari. Yeah, it would be sick. You would look awesome, big name. But really, all you need is, you know, something just to get you by the next couple years, and then you could get your Ferrari. Something like hanging out with Nick Suzuki for a few years until Manderville's ready to go. You know, he's kind of our Honda Civic on the way up to Manderville, which will eventually hopefully be our Ferrari. So you got to think about that. I don't really want to go into this year with Nick Suzuki being 83 overall. I would really like him to be at least 85. If he doesn't grow, then I think we're kind of screwed um it's kind of weird there's no like stud defenseman i mean hayden Fleury's pretty damn good actually six million bucks uh he's really good actually and uh tyson berry so there is a few good defensemen now you could also make the argument we should go after a guy like hayden Fleury or even Tyson Berry because Johnny Tyconic didn't really play that well, but Jacob Bernard Docker could really benefit from a guy like Tyson Berry. Now we tried to sign Tyson Berry a few years ago and he decided to go elsewhere and he killed it. Oh my God, in the prime of his career, he's put up some numbers, man. Holy shit, 68 points, 59, 62, 67, damn. So there's a lot to think about in this thing. We even got Tori Krug, which we could go give a contract to. There's a lot to think about here. Do we go after Jack Hughes or do we play the long game? Do we go after a guy like even Tarasenko is something we could do. We have the cap and I'll show you guys who we have upcoming. I mean, this is all happening so fast, I don't know what to do. Now we have $15 million in cap for right now. If we were to sign a guy like Jack Hughes, Patrick Kane, Tarasenko, etc., that would mean we have to think about who we have to sign in the next upcoming couple of years. So we got Colin White, let's say he wants, he's what, 5.7, let's say he wants 6.5, all right? We also gotta re-sign Alex Nylander, let's say he wants five and a half. Logan Brown maybe wants four, four and a half. Uh, and then that's actually, it's not actually that bad. Uh, Lucas Hirsch and Glenn Sumal are going to be relatively cheap. The next year after that, you got to think three years down the road, or I guess two, Shabbat's going to want six to seven million dollars. Um, you're going to have a guy like, who's the other guy I got to resign here? Nick Ritchie's going to be easy. So you know what? It's actually not that bad. So Matt Murray is the big one. I really want to go until the end of this year just to kind of see what our new guys are looking like. But with this free agency pool, I need to get your guys' thoughts. So that's going to be it for me. I want to thank you guys for watching. Uh, quickly before we end off this video, I didn't actually go check out the awards for last year. So we'll go ahead and do that together real quick. Uh, Washington won the cup, obviously. Presidents went to the Stars. So it was obviously Nashville and Washington in the Stanley Cup final. Player awards, Taylor Hall wins the Art Ross. The heart goes to Taylor Hall as well. So he's taking home some hardware. The ghost, I was going to say the ghost award. Uh, ghost gets the James Norris for the second year year in a row.
Tower Sagan wins Lady Bing. Uh, Cole obviously gets handed the silver spoon and he wins the uh, Calder Trophy as well as the Stanley Cup. Ovi gets this con Smythe. That's awesome. UC Soros takes home the Williams. Bill Masterton goes to some guy I've never heard of. Uh, Frank J. Selke goes to Wenberg for the third year in a row. He is a free agent, by the way. Ted Lindsay goes to Taylor Hall. Damn. And then the Rocket goes to Tyler Sagan. So next episode could be a franchise-altering episode. I don't know what to say here. I really, really need some help. I really need to know what the hell we're going to do. Do we make a huge splash? Do we play the long game? What do we do? Thanks for watching. I need some help in the comments, and I will see you guys in the next one.